Yeah, so I really wanted to check this video out because it came up on my recommended feed. It's been coming up a lot. It actually just came out like three days ago. It's pretty new uh, by this guy named Moon. We actually reacted to him before. I wanted to check out this video with you guys. Okay, guys, so this is Men Are Slowly Giving Up and Nobody Cares uh, Why by Moon. This guy, we reacted to his, I think the video before was like uh, why about the job market and why everybody's hiring but nobody's getting a job. Uh, so that was a really good video too. You should check it out. We reacted to that. And uh, yeah, today we're going to check out Men Are Slowly Giving Up and Nobody Cares. It seems to be an epidemic going on with men. And as a man myself, I think I could relate to this probably. So let's check it out. Increasingly, more and more men are giving up giving up on relationships, careers, and society as a whole. Mm. Resentment is growing, unemployment is becoming rampant, and keeping your head above water seems almost impossible for many men today. This is- Okay, bef pausing it right away, but I just wanna give my, my opinion on this. So I think that, the, uh, I mean, as a man, there's a lot of like, I think there's a lot of pressure from society as a man to be this a certain way that people want you to be. And I think that's, it's been, it's, 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 it's been culminating over time. And it's, it's caused this, I think it's a big part in causing this epidemic, to be honest. Just a lot of expectation, uh, expectations of a man in today's world uh, to act and speak and present themselves in a certain way, uh, which is unfortunate. But um, yeah, it seems like, I mean, I mean, there's, uh, yeah, for women as well, there's women, there's, um, there's like a standard for women as well is what I was trying to say but yeah this is this video is about men but uh yeah I think it's a big it's a big cause and why this is happening like men are giving up in relationships and careers and it's just terrible it's leading to more men than ever dropping out of society entirely and it's not just that men are becoming infantilized with terms like adulting now becoming normal it's clear that something ugly is happening that needs to be addressed we live in such a strained unnatural environment that is bound to start to wear on society but men in particular are battling to keep up and are slowly giving up mm. giving up on dreams giving up on trying and giving up on doing anything constructive and for a large part it's really not their fault as this trend isn't just a personal struggle but a societal issue that we must urgently address what does so that say wait wait wait, wait. I want to read that. Just a personal struggle, but a societal <clears throat> issue that we must urgently address. Okay, why men are, why men still get more promotions than women? Oh, here we go. Yeah. Women more effective than men in all leadership and measures. Women are the better employees than men. Women work hard and more intensively than men. Study uh, women are more productive than men, according to new research. Damn. Okay, so yeah, this is... <laughs> Imagine you're a man, like, well, I'm, I can imagine because I am a man, but you see all these articles and I tried to stay away from articles because a lot of them are like this, but it's very like, de it's very like demotivating for men when they see stuff like this. Cause it's like, okay, I mean, yeah, I'm not trying to be like sexist or anything, but it, there's the articles are like about how, like it literally how the title just shows here, like women are so much better than men. And, uh, yeah, and, like, um, as a man, like, we're told, like, um, it's, like, we have to, re you know, you know, I'm not going to say, I could say a lot of stuff here. I'm not going to say. <laughs> so why? I also wanted to mention about Japan in particular. There's a, there's a, uh, actually a word for a person who literally gives up on life and just shuts themselves inside forever. Uh, never goes outside. It's called a hiki, uh, hikikomori, h i k i h i k i k o m o r i hikikomori. Basically, it as the translation says, it's basically he just stays inside, like holds everything inside. Basically, doesn't go outside. And and mostly men in Japan are like the, uh, it happens to men mostly, where basically they just they just f say fuck society fuck the world and they want it they don't give a shit anymore they don't give a shit what happens to them so they literally just lock themselves in their house and never go outside they get like uber eats or whatever and the, in their houses are like heaps of trash it's like a trash empire and they just play games and watch tv all day but they don't have a life like they they don't have a job they don't have a family they don't have a girlfriend and these people there's actually an interesting video that i wanted to react to but it was like about hikikomoris like we're like what was it it was like um yeah this dude died like 
without ever leaving his house and nobody knew that he died it was crazy anyway it kind of relates to this because about how men are slowly giving up and nobody cares why is this happening and why has it gotten yeah, so, so why bad is this in happening? 2024 on the surface it's a long and complicated story life has never been simple for any human and objectively yeah, speaking for not just men today it's never been better we have all the technology we need, food delivered to your door with the tap of a finger, dating readily available to anyone with a simple swipe, any products, items, or experiences that you want. Okay, well, dating, okay. Well, you have to be attractive too. You can't just be like ugly, okay? <laughs> People are not gonna swipe right on an ugly person. Just that's the, that's the reality. I'm not trying to be mean, it just is be had with the tap of your phone but over time all Oops. of these comforts of life destroys the importance and necessity of struggle without any value placed on higher goals but there just is no reason to care means there's no reason for people to properly live or have the will to achieve greatness which is probably why 40 percent of young men aged 18 to 45 meet the criteria for depression and f oh wait 49 of 18 to 23 year olds have had a thought of passing themselves in the past two weeks alone Okay, so meets screening standards for depressive symptoms, uh, 18 to 23, 44%, uh, 43% for 20 to 30 year olds, and 30, which is, okay, wait, Gen Z. Oh, but I'm 27. What's a zillen zillennial? Am I a zillennial? I thought I was Gen Z. Anyway, um, 31 to 37, millennial, 38 to 45, elder millennial, the elder um yeah wow this graph is really bad man Jeez. yeah a lot of people struggle with depression is terrible i mean there's different types of depression but like i've i've had some depression too but like it's like situational depression you know what i mean it's not like uh to a point where like i'd have to take medicine or something but i i kind of know how it feels to feel depressed but like just situationally and it sucks it really does sadness and depression are very different like sad is like uh sad is like damn i this is this is terrible i, I just this sucks like i'm this is making me want to cry this is sadness and depression is like fuck you you're I don't want to get out of bed, right? It's t it's just completely different, and uh, yeah, it's this is crazy too. Had had thoughts of suicide in the last two weeks. That is insane. In the last two weeks, wow, that is just sad and it's terrible. Uh, to go on, I'm going off another tangent here, but in Japan, it's crazy the suicide rate, and mostly due to this video is probably going to get like it will never be monetized. That's okay because I'm saying the word that that word suicide. Um, but, uh, yeah, so in Japan, I wanted to make a video about this too, actually. It's a huge problem in Japan about the suicide epidemic and the suicide rate. It's very high. There's actually a, a forest in Japan where people go there to commit suicide, and it's very bad. Um, if you all remember, Logan Paul did a video on it. Yeah, that was the, that was the same forest. Um... But yeah, mostly it's like, you know, I'm like on the train going home. Most my train gets delayed quite often because on the line that I take, it's actually pretty popular for suicides for some reason. I don't know why, but every time or well not every time, but very often, which is bad, I will get on the train and it'll be delayed because of, they say, human mistake, which basically means somebody either jumped into the tracks or it was a drunk guy that fell in or somebody looking on his phone that fell in, but it's a mix, it's a mix and a high percentage of that mix is suicide. It's mostly due to overwork, terrible working conditions, and it's it's a very huge problem here. There's actually a, a word for it, it's called karoshi, which means death by overwork, and it's terrible. Anyway, sorry We're for pausing. seeing the symptoms of this problem everywhere. The sapping away of our vision and ambition permeates <clears throat> in all aspects of modern society today our culture, architecture, relationships, bodies, and minds. Past civilizations before us have always placed their emphasis on beauty, wisdom, and logic for all the population to see, with great town squares, bustling with art, life, and community. 
These things were placed above all else as the bedrock of their societies, laying out a code of honour and struggle in its people to achieve greatness. Comforts were shown in art and culture but as an aspiration for achieving something great, for following your mastery. But today our cities are mostly devoid of all of this character, and instead they're marked out by the most cost-efficient, bland and sterile designs to facilitate a simpler self-motivated purpose. It's why people flock all over the world to a handful of remaining cities that retain their centuries-old charm to feel and experience the Oops. character of bygone societies that were motivated by higher ideals. Ideal was okay, so uh, I just want to disagree a little bit with this guy for a second. I mean, I agree with him, but also I wanted to bring up a different point that like in japan for example the buildings are ugly but they're designed that way uh, for a purpose because there's uh, so many earthquakes in japan it's crazy here my house shakes all the time um i'm sure if you've seen the past live streams you've seen earthquakes happen probably but basically yeah the the, the houses are designed in a way that it will withstand an earthquake the that uh, the great architecture in rome and stuff that will crumble at, at an earthquake instantly almost that's why it's ugly but it's very it's practical okay it's not just about what he was talking about i just wanted to give that it greater uh, than our modern two cents ways of thinking with a prioritization of comfort lost in opulence and flashy materialism over individual excellence and greater community we're now reeling in the aftermath becoming instead a generation of mandated mediocrity and does this explain why men today seem to struggle more than ever while seemingly having more than ever? <clears throat> America in particular is not actually in a recession. In fact, on paper, the economy looks like the best it's been in a while. Unemployment has dropped, GDP is up. But what the people are actually experiencing is a completely different story. Mm. We can see this in a study by the University of Michigan on consumer sentiments, which gathers data based on how consumers feel about the current state of finances. In 2022, it dropped to an all time low. Prices of our average daily needs like gas and food have increased in unbearable percentages. In contrast, salary increases do not match, putting a high strain on budgets. Inflation is showing no signs of slowing down as Americans pay over a thousand dollars a month more on the same as essentials we were buying three years ago That's yeah it's crazy like i want to show you guys uh let me just do get my drawing out paint okay so basically let me get it over here so basically like we'll probably see a graph from this guy but it's gonna look like this okay we have our graph here and we're gonna see our salary okay well actually hold on let's change the color Okay, so blue is going to be our salary increases, right? Like this. Maybe like this, right? And then red is going to be the like the household increase, grocery increase, price increases, household increases. It's going to be like this, like this maybe, and then boom, it's like this, okay? And by the way, this is probably like around what? This is like 20 2024 and this is like 1950, right? So this is crazy. Look at the gap. Like, and you can't even see it. It's so big, right? This is basically what it looks like. The gap is like this, and it's insane. It's crazy. Nothing's changed but price. The latest consumer price index for March showing basic necessities like our food, housing, and gas yeah. are all continuing to cripple Americans' wallets with higher prices. Inflations are, our, our wages are actually down against inflation since biden took office so not only are prices soaring but you know our wages at least if you measure hourly wages are not keeping up at all keeping your head above water has become the new normal instead of owning a home with a white picket fence the rich are becoming yeah. richer and the poor are becoming poorer true the middle class disintegrating completely middle class all yeah. the knowledge of the past of just going to college getting a job and buying a home immediately it's just completely irrelevant for anyone working and living in 2024. that might have worked for like the boomer generation but it doesn't work for my generation you just it just doesn't work that way anymore yeah it was like the american dream we're gonna go to college we're gonna get a job we're gonna get a family and live happily ever after and get a house but it's just not simple like that anymore you get a college degree it doesn't mean anything and nowadays the the degree i have is uh is uh japanese uh, it's a major in international relations and politics and then a minor in japanese language and culture but it literally doesn't help me at all because I don't even use that. My current job is completely different. All they, all they care about is if I took the time and money to go to college and have a bachelor's degree.
That's all they care about nowadays. Universities have skyrocketed in prices to absurd levels. The housing yeah. market is in a complete giant bubble. Everyone's sending out job applications more and more, all while using these automated testing systems, applying up to 100 jobs a day. That's what we watched last video. Anywhere. All the while, major companies repeatedly tell us that they can't find any workers for their companies. And the results of this are clear. People are drifting towards more unfulfilling jobs, or just not even having a job at all. While the rich buy up resources, real estate, and everything that used to be the cornerstones of the middle class, that is now just an investment hidden through an offshore bank account for some giant investment fund. Basically, what they want to do is create a nation of renters. BlackRock coming in and giving them more money than the house is worth. How much more do they give them? They can give them, you know, 30% <laughs> above. Really? Which is money. And, and then they and just lease those Black homes Rock. out. And they lease them out. It's part of this idea that home ownership and automobile ownership and all of these things, these legacy systems that people want to get rid of. And they go, rent a house, use Uber, Lyft, whatever. You know, mm. you don't need to own. What does owning do for you? That's mm. that famous article, you'll own nothing and be happy. Right. Um, and because of this, all saving plans for regular people are halted because living paycheck to paycheck means there just isn't enough for a savings plan. And whilst there is still some hope to dig your way out, for most, this does begin a damaged path. People end up working in a job that's not in their field, something that they hate to do every day. <laughs> it's and exactly. eliminates the experience they need for the job in their field. And it's so exactly what the I was saying. they are getting is just completely useless for getting back on track. In effect, their now entry level position is further deviating them from becoming lawyers, psychologists, or whichever career path they studied for. And if the middle class is experiencing this, then the lower earners are feeling this even more. The jobs they once had a chance of landing now go to the middle class, while they get mm -hmm. hit a bump lower, which is putting millions of people in dire straits. They face working twice as hard for minimum wage, juggling between jobs, partaking in the gig economy with absolutely no security, all with an extreme pressure to keep up with daily expenses in a completely overpriced mega city. And the truth is both middle and lower earners are now taking a huge hit to their egos. Okay, so let's back up for a second. The huge uh, mega city, right? Chicago, New York, San Francisco, California, LA, and anywhere in LA or anywhere in California, um, don't live there. Okay, I know that's like where all this action is, but that's also where the most expensive prices are. Why would you live there? I went to New York and it was insane. Like, what the fuck? It's crazy how much a hamburger costs there. It's like, what? Why would you live there? Live somewhere really cheap and then you know get a job there unless you're like born in new york and physically can't move then that's a different story but yeah it's like don't move to the big cities it's stupid they feel disrespected through no fault of their own as no man wants to feel like a failure they don't want to feel like they're not providing or on their destiny imagine putting in the hours and effort to get a degree and then having to take a job that's not even within the field you studied for well this is just regular life for most people nowadays it's making men feel incredibly depressed and isolated they watch all the stuff yeah. on social media. They see people flexing the Doom scrolling. on Instagram stories. Meanwhile, they're struggling to survive, living a life they absolutely hate. And when friends watch it, people watching too much Andrew Tate, man, it's showing off Rolexes and Bugattis and all these like videos I've seen on the shorts when I scroll through, it's like Thomas Shelby, Peaky Blinders, all those crazy shorts, or like Sigma male, Alpha male shorts. It's insane. Yeah, don't. I mean, Doom scrolling is bad. Like for men. It, Especially, it's crazy. I've almost fallen into that trap as well. Hey, Studio of Art, welcome. Are you seeing me so freaking early? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm. I was early. Well, because it's uh, it's like midday Japan time. It's Saturday, so yeah. Anyway, we're watching. We were playing some games. Now we're watching some YouTube. Friends and family ask about it, they suffered the humiliation of explaining why they had to take what was available. Even though it isn't humiliating at all, and they're doing what they can to survive, it definitely takes a huge effect on their mental health. Especially as it wasn't that long ago, where it was actually normal to enter the workforce with a mentor who would show you the ropes and encourage you and push you to learn more. Starting at the bottom didn't seem so bad because there was an opportunity to grow and reap more rewards. Yeah, that was like the original American dream. You start American dream, you start at the bottom and work from work your way to the top ranks to riches right it's always the greatest story ever told basically uh omg somebody donated donated money to you nice yeah uh thank you so much yeah and thanks again to he's not here anymore he had to go to bed but gary bobby fergus uh ferguson thank you so much donated uh super chat on uh youtube thank you so much man and yeah it was really awesome first first youtube donation it's a milestone <laughs>
This imperative step is slowly slipping away. Companies of prestige have forgotten the generation with no experience. And for many companies, this is what they want. This is actually the ideal scenario where they have people yeah, so desperate, is. so in need of experience that they can treat their workers like absolute trash. Exactly. Since the companies don't give a shit about you. Levels have dropped more than 50% and yet we're told to ignore it. Why? Because there's a coordinated effort to suppress masculinity and turn men into something they were never meant to be. This decline is no accident. We're constantly exposed to harmful chemicals in our food and everyday products, bombarded with estrogenic chemicals from plastics, junk food, and sedentary lifestyles, which is why testosterone levels- That looks like a really <laughs> fat Jake Paul for some reason. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> also, I wanted to see what the, was on the chip. All right, what we got, what we got. Kettle cooked. Oh, I like kettle cooked. I like that. I also like the smart food popcorn. It's really good. Also, okay. We'll skip past this. We're constantly yeah, yeah, I wanted to see this. Look at that. Oh, yes. Fast food, baby. So good. ...exposed to harmful chemicals in our food and everyday products. Bombarded with estrogenic chemicals from plastics, junk food, and sedentary <clears throat> lifestyles. Which is why testosterone levels have been declining for decades. With a 17% drop among 60 year olds in 2004. Really? Compared to 1987. Sperm count and strength in men are also decreasing exponentially, with a 32.5% decrease in mean sperm concentration in the last 50 years. But here's the good news, there are ways to fight back, and one of the most effective solutions that I found is our sponsor Black Forest okay, Tagesterone with Tonkat Ali. <laughs> this supplement is packed with two of the most powerful <laughs> So hurry and take advantage of this amazing 40 of having a job and support me along inside this amazing brand using the link in the description below. The cost of having a job also plays a part in stripping them of their dignity. Transport costs to their job, depending on the amount, could take a huge chunk of their salary. So yeah, that dude. Okay. There's a thing in Japan, like, well, we have public transportation, right? Trains. And then com it depends on the company, but there's companies that will pay uh, up to a certain amount per month for you to ride the train from your house to work. Um, it's called a a take again, which is like a uh, what is I don't even know the English for it. It's basically oh, it's a commu commuter pass, and they'll pay for that. Uh, and it's a good deal if you have a company that does that because it's really nice. Because you you know even like on the weekend if you're going to the next station to go hang out with friends, it's free. Um, and then in the, well, there's a lot of companies that don't do that, which is bad. So you have to get lucky there. But in the United States, and I've done this because I've worked in the United States. The car, man. The cars are just money-sucking machines. It's crazy. I hate cars. I'm so glad I don't have a car anymore. Yeah, the cars just cost so much money, and I feel bad for the Americans. Uh, my countrymen, yes. At the end of the day, they can only pay for rent or food and not both. A government yep. grant could replace their salaries, and they earn more or less the same amount. What's also helping to pay the bills is, as I said, uh, the U.S. government, in particular, uh, our disability programs for people who are unable to work. Those programs seem to have morphed away from their original humane intention mm. and now seem to provide an alternative income source to regular employment for s several millions, for actually for millions and millions of these guys if a job doesn't support your basic needs of a yeah like uh i mean it's a very sad uh, very unfortunate reality but the disability services get taken advantage of where people who are actually disabled that need the money don't get the money and instead these people who take advantage are these bums basically that just um take the money from them uh i don't know how it's allowed like uh, it's just stupid Oops. Own food and transport, it wears thin and justifying the effort for this job, especially if you're not getting any experience. And in most cases, if you go into the gig economy, absolutely no security either, all for minimum wage. There's even a new term called quietly quitting, where you do the bare minimum of your job to the point that you're almost rendered useless and you get fired or simply quit. The fact that this term even exists shows that attention is desperately needed to solve this problem. And while this is happening, it's becoming more and more common for both partners in a household <laughs> to be living the same life or even with most male's partners actually being the breadwinner. And whilst this isn't necessarily a problem at all, it is leading to some weird modern problems in the household. Men with mm. families are actually switching their roles with their wives, except they're not actually doing what their wives would do if they were to stay at home. When you look at what 
uh, I guess in Britain it's called NEET, N-E-E-T. Do you ah, say that also in Australia? It's also called that in Japan. Or in uh, education or training. <laughs> when you look at that huge group of well over 6 million uh, prime age men, the story they're telling about their lives is a really... Uh, pretty devastating. It's pretty distressing. They basically don't do civil society. There's almost no worship, almost no volunteering, almost no charitable work. Um, they've got a lot of time on their hands, but they report doing strangely little help around the home or help with other people at home. Because of the situation, mm. some men may feel a sense of okay. worthlessness and resentment. Some men might take an hour to clean up the house and fetch the kids, but the rest of the day they sleep or play games. In some cases, the wives work and then come home to finish the chores their husbands were meant to do but didn't. <laughs> and whilst this might cause huge marriage problems, it still feels better off to the husbands. If asked what they do for a living, saying they're on a break or working on a project beats the humiliation of saying they work in McDonald's with a useless degree on their back. Men without families have nothing to lose, so they stop working because no woman would even want them anyway. They can't afford to date, they can't afford a family, and since their own families are supportive, it somehow justifies them giving up and staying at home, rather than facing these societal problems head on, with prices rising, getting hired becoming harder and harder by the day, and inequality becoming rampant within society, most men are just deciding to give up. Because instead of facing the hardships of having a job, it just seems so much easier to escape. Whether it be terminally being online, playing video games all day, or hiding behind doing chores at home to show they still have a purpose and are doing their best. The point being that for many men in 2024, if they're gonna be disrespected and feel worthless, they may as well choose the easy way out than a battle. Yeah, it's like, it's like basically like, I mean, I don't, I don't like how like the, like if, if it was me and I was like the stay at home dad or whatever, I would help out like as much as possible. But these, I don't like the guys that just don't, like he was saying, like don't, don't do all the chores. Obviously I like playing video games and you know, watching TV. But if my wife is like at work and, you know, working her ass off, then yeah, I'm going to go uh, take care of the, the house chores and stuff and maybe make dinner or whatever to to help with because if they come home like uh at like 8 p.m you're like they just want to eat right same way if it was for men and then there was a housewife like they just want to they just want to relax they don't have to deal with bullshit right um yeah so yeah the point being that for many men in 2024 if they're going to be disrespected and feel worthless they may as well choose the easy way out and then a battle yeah basically they don't want to deal with they just, they basically just say fuck them they say fuck it and they just go play video games. <laughs> If respect had a currency on how it would affect your life directly, you would see a different picture. A man with a job with high pressure, long hours, and doing something that makes him feel degraded would be worth say $100, but staying at home, playing games, and escaping, all while being with the people he loves, is probably worth $200 because of how it affects him. This explains yeah. why more and more men are deciding to drop out of society rather than face it head on, as it just seems to be the easier path. If it's a choice between two paths, one that offers little satisfaction while the other provides comfort, it's easy to see why men are going this route. But the thing is, this is a terrible mistake. Yeah, yeah, and this it is. this is creating problems that we've never seen before. If there is no emphasis or any facilitation of the need to aspire to something greater and the game seems rigged to most who are playing it, it's hardly a surprise record numbers of men are dropping out and giving up on the game entirely. The problem is that there's a huge group of men, roughly about 7 million in America between the ages of 25 and 55, who are not working and are actively not looking for work. Now, COVID certainly had a hand in accelerating these figures. One question posed to these dropouts was how many of these men were on pain medication, and almost half of these men admitted to taking pain medication daily. And aside from those who desperately need it, these figures could indicate that men are aimlessly numbing themselves to their new reality. And this is great for society as people don't have to deal with this huge problem. And what's even more shocking is that 40% of these men do have some kind of degree. What sort of men are in this group? Demographically, education, family structure, ethnicity, who makes up this group? I'm gonna guess that it's like people from in their 25 to 34, let's say that. Surprisingly large, um, we say, representation of uh, guys with college or even college degrees. 40% of this group has at least some college, and as I recall, about a fifth or a sixth are college grads. The decision to be in this state okay. is closely related to changing times. We've already discussed the effects of brain rot in another upload, which disabled problem solving in Generation Z and has already presented problems in finding jobs. What? Is, well, come on. <laughs> Sorry. I'm from Ohio. Dude, welcome to Ohio. Really? Okay, I just had to I just had to point that out. <laughs> come on, man.
Ohio, no. Ohio, no. They are quick to quit at the first difficult task and move on to find something else, but what happens when options run dry and they find themselves simply stuck in limbo? Giving up seems to be the next step and accepting that. Okay, this is what you need to get your ass off here. Get your fucking ass off the couch. Be like me. Get a YouTube channel, okay? I, 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 this is how, this is how we, this is how I like, you know, uh, release stress. I just, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Okay. This is the YouTube channel that I made to go along with the, you know, my life with the work, right? You need a hobby is what I'm trying to say. You need a fucking hobby. Okay. If you have nothing to work towards, it's just meaningless, right? Yeah. Your life your job might suck you might fucking hate your job right but if you hate if you have something that you like doing like youtube or twitch or anything not just youtube and twitch but you have to have something else that's it's very important to have that balance because if your life is just full of that job that you fucking hate then it's just you know hard to live that way easy when they're discouraged by the situation. Working off as surveys, the data compiled indicates that these men are not only not working, but they're cutting themselves off from their communities, or there's no incentivization for them to even have any community in the first place. They're hiding out because going out would mean meeting new people who might oppose their lifestyles. It makes it uncomfortable. Why leave when you can just aimlessly watch brain rock content and numb yourself with weed or pain medication and stay inside in the warm comfort of home? Yep. And any sexual needs you have can be satisfied with pixels on a screen. This lifestyle yes. is increasingly becoming more and more normal for men in the West. But what's important to note is that men don't Not just the West, way. like I it's mentioned earlier. This guy, well, he probably just is talking about the West. I'm sure he understands about the East as well. But like I was saying earlier in the video, it's a terrible epidemic in Japan. I don't know about other Asian countries. I'm sure it's like similar, South Korea and China probably. But in Japan, it's something I, I can speak for, for about Japan because I live here. But like I was saying, there's the people that are shut-ins, the hikikomori's needs, uh, that just don't give a fuck about society anymore. They don't give a fuck. And um, yeah, it's just not just, it's what I'm trying to say is that it's not just the West. It's happening everywhere for men especially for men uh in japan yeah women too but mostly men or normal for men in the west but what's important to note is that men don't want to be this way it's a horrible lifestyle it's depressing it's atomizing yeah what this really is it's just a coping mechanism it's like addiction a form of self-defense against a society that's becoming increasingly hostile to these men up until recently the problem has been invisible these figures weren't shown in any statistics or surveys because they slipped through the cracks until very recently. So why did they slip through the cracks? Well, it's easy to see. They simply don't fit the victim criteria. Some have degrees. They're in the prime of their lives. And it was yeah, their yeah, yeah. You, you, uh, yeah. Okay. So like this can be applied to like famous people too. Famous streamers, famous YouTubers, right? It's like, okay, the the viewer will see the, the YouTuber or streamer or whatever, famous streamer, they're rich, they're, they have a great life, they play video games for a living, but they're fucking depressed and they're sad, right? But they don't give a shit. The viewer does not give a shit because they're in that position. Automatically, you don't get a say, you know, you don't get a say, basically. And... Um, yeah, it just sucks that it's like that. But it's like famous people have the problem too. It's like they're they're human beings too, right? And uh, just because you're in a good situation doesn't mean you're you're good mentally, right? There's a lot of uh, people that I've met that are basically like have the the best life. Like they're rich, they have family, wife, job, good job, stable job, kids. Uh, they have good work life balance. Even so, they have never been more fucking depressed in their entire life. It happens, and it's sad. And yeah, it's just bad. Their choice to quit. It's easily overlooked and only comes to light as the numbers rise. Nicholas Upstart wrote a book called Men Without Work and has since exposed and addressed the problems in his book. He says he is trained to look for hidden and plain sight problems, which is how he stumbled upon this issue. You see, these men are not causing trouble, at least for now and they don't seem to be drawing any attention to themselves. On the contrary, they keep to themselves. So surveys and statistics just don't include them at all. They don't even register on the scale, and people in society think this is a joke issue. And it's also reasonable to conclude that some of these men may work, but in the underground economy. Work like formal cash jobs, or even shady legal ways of making money. 
But of course, this is just a minor portion of these men. We need to address the problem head on. How is the situation getting this bad? These men have completely lost their purpose in life. All of their duty, their hopes, their responsibilities, their own dignity and value, it's being completely decimated at the moment. And we're seeing this with the form of radicalization online growing hatred and division, and a general apathy towards society as a whole. And the longer this is ignored, the harder it's going to be addressed down the line. More men today than ever feel disconnected, disillusioned, and left behind by a world that seems increasingly indifferent to their struggles. While GDP numbers and employment stats may sound like an easy good solution on paper, especially to government bureaucracies, it will never really fix the reality of the situation for normal people. The real yeah, challenge we face today in the West is to find purpose and meaning again to have any reason to even want to participate and achieve greatness in society. We should focus on creating environments where people can thrive, where beauty, philosophy, and higher noble pursuits are actively encouraged by the cities and countries that we inhabit, which would give millions of men a reason to care again. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good it's a good point at the end there. Which would give millions <laughs> We should focus on creating environments where people can thrive, where beauty, philosophy, and higher noble pursuits are actively encouraged by the cities and countries that we inhabit. What should give millions of men more reason again. to care again? I think that's a good point. I like that. Yeah. So guys, that was um, that was a really good video by uh, Moon. Men are slowly giving up and nobody cares. So why is that happening, right? And uh, yeah, it was a really good video. Uh, I think it's just a really sad situation. It's true. That it's just a uh, there's a lot of expectation for men to to be a certain somebody by from society a lot of societal pressure and um, not just in the West but everywhere else I think yeah I think it it just needs to be it needs to get better um, yeah anyway <laughs> if you guys like the video make sure to smash the like button and hit subscribe and uh yeah make sure to give moon a subscribe i already did and give him a like on the video that was a really good video i'll link it in the description uh yeah thanks